Clean air. How can you assure the cleanest, healthiest air in your homes? Before beginning the renovation, inspect the existing ventilation for problems. You can do this by interviewing occupants, conducting a visual inspection, and creating a checklist of items. Visit the NCHH website for more information. So I get that information, I take an inventory. What have I got here? And a lot of times to solve problems or to make a renovation go well, all I'm really doing is repairing the uh, existing equipment and making it more energy efficient and more effective at distributing the ventilating air that it's bringing into the building. Two items you can take into consideration at this time are designing the HVAC system into the home's performance and deciding whether or not to install individual ventilation systems. If each apartment has an individual ventilation system and is air sealed, your occupants will have good ventilation throughout the seasons. If the duct system is improved with increased insulation and reduced leakage, it lowers cyclic losses and improves the part load humidity control. Optimal ventilation improves indoor air quality by providing fresh air to the living space on a regular basis. To figure out how much ventilation is appropriate for your homes, calculate the ventilation load or rate. There are several methods to use but ideally spaces need to be 0.35 air changes per hour, ACH, and not less than 15 cubic feet per minute, CFM, per person. The symptoms that uh, say low ventilation rate to me include asthma events, eye, nose, and throat irritation. If the ventilation rate is too low, increased odor complaints. Achieving an accurate calculation is always the best route. The ASHRAE ventilation load standards are the industry standard. Talk to your engineer about which calculation is the most appropriate. Choosing ventilation systems can vary from project to project. There are three types of ventilation, local, whole house, and combination. Local ventilation, which includes exhaust fans, is designed to remove moisture or other contaminants from a specific area of the building. Exhaust fans should always be ducted through the exterior skin of the building to the outside and fitted with a proper termination. Venting to an attic or basement is not sufficient because these spaces can actually increase moisture by sending warm or contaminant-laden air to other spots in the home. Ventilation ducts in unconditioned space should be insulated to eliminate condensation. Avoid using ductwork that is made of vinyl flex duct or other flimsy materials because they're not as durable. After installation, all exhaust fans should be tested to ensure that the specifications are met. In the bathroom, be sure to install a fan that is rated for continuous operation since most bathroom fans are not. The primary drawback of the local exhaust approach is that as inside air is exhausted, outside air will be drawn into the house through random cracks and holes instead of through a dedicated fresh air supply. Whole house ventilation systems can be exhaust only, supply only, or exhaust and supply. At the lower cost end are exhaust only systems that use exhaust fans running continuously at low speed. Supply only brings outside air into the return plenum of the heating cooling system. The intake should be located in a clean area and the air should be filtered prior to being circulated throughout the house. Finally, a combination exhaust and supply system is considerably more expensive, but has the advantage of being much more energy efficient. In northern climates, a heat recovery ventilator, or HRV, captures the heat from the exhausted air and transfers it to the outside air coming in. In southern climates, an energy recovery ventilator, or ERV, removes the moisture from the incoming air and transfers it to the air being exhausted. Both HRVs and ERVs will bring in outside air with little energy loss. For ways to maintain proper ventilation, use filters that have an ASHRAE rating known as Minimum Efficiency Reporting Value, or MERV, and conduct inspections and occupant surveys. These steps will improve the respiratory health of your customers by increasing their fresh air supply. 
and maintaining proper ventilation keeps your customer's energy costs down. There are a couple of reasons for doing healthy homes. The, the first one is that it reduces your complaint rate and it reduces your callbacks. By designing the building so that it's better for your customers, you end up with fewer problems in your buildings. Anything that better myself and, 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 and the community that I live in, we are a community of children, and to enhance the quality of their life, that's what it's all about. As a housing professional, it's possible for you to create healthier and greener buildings by using practices that are beneficial to the structure and its occupants, all with minimal costs. By properly dealing with moisture management, pest management, radon mitigation, and ventilation, you can deliver health, comfort, and savings to the occupants of the homes you renovate and build.